Hello, I want to talk to you about how we can use this unprecedented crisis that we are going through as an opportunity. Let me give you an analogy, an analogy that I call sharpening the spear. When a hunter is in his lean season, when it's the deep of winter, he doesn't rest. He spends the time sharpening his spear. When the fish aren't plentiful, the fisherman does not rest. He mends his nets, he repairs his boats so that he is ready for when the hunting will be plentiful, when the fish will be running again. We need to do the same thing as business leaders. We need to use this time, a time that we can pause, a time that we can reflect in order to sharpen our spear. Let me share with you five strategies for accomplishing this. Two of these strategies have to do with internal talent and improving the skill sets of your people. Another strategy has to do with how we operate and transforming how we operate. And the next final two strategies have to deal with how we view our customers and the markets and the opportunities that exist outside. So let's start with what we need to do internally. The first approach that I would strongly recommend is acquire talent. There is a lot of surplus talent that is being let go in a variety of industries. There are software developers that startups are letting go. There are marketing and sales executives. You can acquire this talent even if you do it on a short-term basis, maybe as contractors, maybe as giving them short-term projects, there are a lot of really skilled people that are available in the market. So if you do have some cash, if you can invest in that talent, this is a really great time to augment your talent uh, because when things turn, talent that is in rare supply, such as analytics professionals, data scientists, client service representatives uh, are going to be difficult to find. So this is a good time. It's almost like, you know, the stock market may be off 30%. The talent market is also off 30, 50%. So this is a good time to do that. Another very interesting strategy for acquiring talent is what I call cross-placement. There are industries that are losing a lot of jobs, you know, aviation, retail, uh, you know, and so on. But on the other hand, there are industries where you are seeing a massive explosion in demand. Uh, Amazon is hiring a lot of people to work in warehouses, uh, grocery stores need more people. There's a massive you know, increase in demand in healthcare, as well as teachers are being stressed, uh, government workers and so on. So what you can do is cross placement by looking at not the titles, not the industries uh, and the job roles, but really look at the skill sets, the underlying skill sets and see if you can match skill sets. For example, Aldi, which is a, a retail chain, a grocery chain in, in Germany, has taken on a bunch of people who used to work for McDonald's because they have transferable skill sets. So look for talent. Look for talent that is in your industry or actually beyond your industry through class placement. The second thing that you need to do is to upskill your people. This is a great time to train your people and to be able to sort of uh, enhance their skill sets because we have, we have been seeing a transformation in business for a long time. You need more people who understand analytics, machine learning. You need people who understand digital marketing, you know, sort of the modern way to run an enterprise and enterprise operations. So this is a time that you can actually invest in the development of your people. What I would suggest is to assess the skill gaps and to create a learning agenda for each of your employees. Uh, whether that is online courses that they can take or uh, from a business school or a third party provider or technical certifications get them certified on you know azure uh, or or on aws or you know so get those certificate google analytics facebook analytics this is a great time to learn the third thing that you need to do is to transform your internal operations how you manage customer contact how you manage meetings, how you manage remote teams, how you run your operations. Let me give you a couple of examples. In the automotive retailing business, dealers are now experimenting with sort of no contact and zero touch service appointments. 
they're also experimenting with trying to sell cars and go through that whole negotiation process online. So what about creating a permanent transformation in your customer experience to create a no touch customer experience end to end, entirely digital. So I see that in the future cars may be bought, sold and serviced using entirely an end to end digital process. So that's an example of transformation of the customer experience. Similarly, you can think about how you can transform your internal operations. I'm on the board of Reliance Geo, the world's largest mobile network operator. We have 28,000 people working in call centers. These people are now being forced to work from home. We have given them the equipment that allows them to work from home. But what we're finding is they're actually more productive. So in fact, we were discussing that when this COVID uh, crisis is over, we may never open or reopen our call centers. We may actually create a permanent system for working from home for these call center operators. So think about your internal operations and how you can transform your work processes, taking advantage of what we've been forced to do. The fourth thing I would recommend is to anticipate future demand trends and position yourself for the demand that will come because demand that comes when it comes back will be transformed. There will be a greater demand, for instance, for resilience of supply chain. There will be greater demand for agility in operation. There will be a greater pressures on asset management and asset optimization, cost reduction, productivity improvement. So these are sort of the future demand patterns that you can see. Uh, you can see that certain industries will have, you know, if you're a B2B company, you're going to see less demand from department stores, but more department from e store demand from e-commerce stores. So you really have to think about where your customers are going to be, what their needs are going to be, and you need to position yourself for that. And in order to do that, the final thing that I would suggest is sharpen your value propositions. Focus your value propositions on the needs of the day. Make, I would say, make your value proposition COVID compliant, make them relevant. To give you an example, I'm on the board of a company called Bhavan Cybertech. They are an IT services and products company. So we have a solution for banking that focuses on early warning systems for banks. We have really amplified that because banks have a very strong need to predict their loan losses and their credit losses. So this early warning system, we are positioning this as our lead offering and we're seeing a tremendous amount of traction. Similarly, we sell a solution for asset optimization for power plants. So today power plants are seeing a huge fluctuation and volatility in demand. So it's much more important for them to run their assets and their production operations more efficiently. So value propositions that resonate with our customers today focus on productivity, asset optimization and operations improvement. So in summary, a good hunter doesn't wait for the season to turn. A good fisherman doesn't wait for the fish to run. This is a time where we can step back, improve our talent, improve our internal capability, transform our operations, anticipate future demand trends, and create value propositions that will resonate for the future. I love a quote that said, never waste a good crisis. I think we should take advantage of the opportunity that hides in the middle of this crisis and position ourselves for the future because this too shall pass and the demand will come back but we need to be ready for the demand that will come in the future with the people the capabilities to exploit that so i hope this has been a message that is inspirational that gives you some insight into thinking about how you can position yourself for the post coronavirus future